Today I want to speak specifically to training legs with any kind of disc herniation, disc bulge, disc rupture, you've had some kind of surgery such as a laminectomy or discectomy or even a fusion and you're scared of exercising, you want to train your lower body but you know what training your lower body consists of which is usually pain. Well there's three mistakes that I see people make a lot when it comes to working out and building stronger legs with that kind of back history and we're going to break them down today so that you don't keep doing them. And this is your first time here and you're like, dude, this is awesome. I want more. Well, I've got a free download that you can get that will expand on what we talked about today and giving you specific strategies of using exercise to overcome persistent pain or to exercise safely after some kind of surgery. You can grab that at fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash pain free training. It's a guide that you download, keep forever, reference as much and as often as you want. If you work out, you're going to want this free guide. Fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash pain free training. Let's jump in. All right. So the first mistake that I see a lot is overarching the low back, right? Being in too much extension. For some reason, back in the day, we were told chest out, butt out. And that idea when you're deadlifting or squatting, chest out, butt out, and it puts a lot of compression on the low back. It gets you out of it what it would be more of a neutral position and in more of an overextended position. Well, the problem is if you have a sensitive low back, this overextension, especially herniations, bulges, fusions, all the above, this overextension is going to cause sensitivity. It's going to cause pain. So what you've got to do is start working on getting yourself out of being overextended, thinking, chest out, butt out, or thinking if I compress my low back and I, and I really try to peel everything back and then lift or then do whatever you're doing for your legs, that that's going to help me because it's not going to help you. Now, if you have a hard time or don't understand how to find what neutral is to you, I did a video here on the YouTube channel on how to find neutral, how to find neutral pelvis and lower back. Go check that video out. But once you're able to find what neutral is to you, then we brace around that, then we lift. Odds are your numbers are gonna be less, you're gonna feel weaker, it's not gonna feel right, you're gonna feel imbalanced. Well, we're creating new grooves. We have to make these new mental patterns, getting you out of extension and into what would be more of a powerful position when it comes to training the legs and building strength safely. The second biggest mistake I see when it comes to training your legs safely is not bracing from the stomach. Due to the habit, oftentimes coming from the overextension habit, the chest out, butt out habit, is we turn our low back into our core, right? So where we brace and we squeeze and we tighten and compress from the low back, then we lift, thinking that that's a stable structure. Well, it's not, especially if you have a sensitive low back. What you want to do is start in the abs, and this takes a mind-body connection. You have to think about this for a second, okay? So before you go to do your lunge, before you go to do your squat or whatever you're doing for your lower body training that day, is you have to actively get yourself in a neutral position, make sure your pelvis is set in a good comfortable spot, your low back is relaxed, not over tensed, not over tightened or contracted, and you breathe and brace from the abs, from here, the anterior part of your stomach. Once you can brace from there and you contract and squeeze, make sure it's all tight, you're gonna do two things at one time, and it's more of like a mental trick. You're bracing, but also trying to relax this low back at the same time. Trust me, it's, it's pretty much impossible to keep that going, but the mental connection, it's almost like a cue that you can use to say, okay, okay, I'm, I'm not contracting in my low back, I'm bracing for my stomach, okay, before I lift, let's relax the low back so I'm not turning on the low back as I go to lunge or as I go to, to squat or whatever I'm doing. I don't wanna turn it on. Now I'm turning off my stomach and shifting back to my back as my core. What I'm trying to do is kind of give you an idea of this is what you're doing wrong. Your low back is over contracted, over protected and overworking. Your abs, your core should be the main thing taking the load first and then allowing the other muscles to come in and activate and contract and do their thing the way they were created to do on time. The third mistake I see a lot of people making when it comes to training the lower body with any kind of disc injury is not training hamstrings enough. With the types of squats that you might be doing, the lunges or the step ups and all the things that you tend to do, odds are you might be hitting your glutes really well, you might be hitting your quads really well, but you're not hitting your hamstrings as much as you should. 
And what I try to get people to do is break the habit of just kind of picking three exercises and just doing them and assuming that the squat is an awesome enough exercise to hit all the muscles at one time efficiently. Let's step away from that. If you have a sensitivity, you have a herniation, a bulge, we, we don't wanna be doing squatting anyways. So in the meantime, double down on your hamstring exercises. For the next three to four months, I want you to do two hamstring exercises for every quad dominant exercise or glute exercise that you do. Write that down, put it in your program, and just start doing it. Simple enough, we gotta start training our hamstrings more. The time and time again, I know for me in my own personal situation with a ruptured L5S1 disc, when I would train legs, if I did a lot of like quad dominant stuff, because it's just convenient, right? You think about going forward, so we're doing lunges, whether they're forward lunges or reverse lunges, you're doing step ups, you're doing side lunges, you're doing a lot of things that require your legs in, in general but they're either gonna hammer your, your, your glutes really well, they're gonna hammer your quads really well, they might touch your hamstrings, but do more isolated, targeted hamstring work. And you'll see the difference in how your lower body feels, especially just your body in general, after some kind of lower body workout day. And that's it guys, those are my three mistakes that I see a lot of people making when it comes to any kind of disc injury, herniations, bulge, fusion, uh, post-surgery. I think if you focus on those three biggest mistakes there, your workouts will improve, your lower body will feel a lot better, your overall body in general will feel better because you're not making these mistakes and causing symptoms or causing flare-ups and sensitivity. So don't forget, if you want to dive deeper into this, if you wanna have more of a structured plan on building a, a smarter strength program for you and your situation, whether it be herniations, bulge, fusion, whatever it may be, go to fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash pain free training. It is a free guide that you can take in and apply to your own workouts. Grab that at fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash pain free training. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I will see you on the next episode.